starting at verse 17. Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? And I'll try to knock this out in about 25 minutes, y'all. The Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. I can't hide what I'm about to do from Abraham. Why, Lord? For I know him. That he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. That the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. And I'm just going to talk about for these few moments is the purpose of a father. The purpose of a father. I know this is America. Like they say, they come into America. This is America, Jack. Right? This is America. So we don't, the father is kind of at the bottom of the barrel when yeah. it comes to talking about the, the man and what happens in the day-to-day -day family life and things like that. And that's not taking anything away from the women. The women have a tough job. And I know that's why God made us the way he made us. Because I look at the things that women do and accomplish, and I just say, it is no way on God's green earth I could do that or endure that. Of, of how a woman just gracefully carries a, a baby for nine months and has this whole human yeah. growing inside. Couldn't, can't even coach, can't even fathom what that's like. Yeah. Other things that we would take, no. But men also have our responsibilities and the things that we're supposed to do. It's always an inside joke. Chris Rock said a long time ago, daddy does all this work, he does all, puts all this labor on his back. And the only reward he get when he comes home is the big piece of chicken. That's it. He said his mama would flip out if somebody accidentally ate the big piece of chicken. Because after the man worked 12, 16 hours, the least we can do is give him the big piece of chicken. But slowly what has happened in our culture, and it's not like this everywhere. That's why I'm just speaking about American culture. What has happened slowly is the man has slowly uh, stood in the forefront of the household as the representative of God. Right? And showing what responsibility is and showing what accountability is. And he's kind of just slowly fading, 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 and fading to the background. So now what has happened is most people, most children, most people just looking out into the world, whether you're looking at your individual family, whether you're looking at TV, a movie, whatever it is, very rarely will you see a man taking his original responsibility the way God intended. Do we agree with that or am I speaking along? It was kind of hard. Man. Maybe I'm telling, I'm fibbing. Am I fibbing? No. Well, maybe we'll get into it, so we'll, we'll see. This is important because this is the way God set it up. What does that mean? That means that it's not the woman's job to get the kids up and pray in the morning and take them to church. That's right. It's the man's responsibility. Yeah. It's not the woman's job to be leading a prayer and, and saying, well, I'll pray for us because the man don't want to pray or because the man don't want to give or because the man don't want to spend time That's at right. church. That's, right. That's the man's job in the first place. The woman shouldn't even have an opportunity because the man already said to him, like, no, I got this, baby. I got he's already in his rightful place. But if the man ain't there doing what he's supposed to do, somebody got to do it. Priest, 
of the home. Prophet, covering the family with the word of God, saying what's going to be is going to be. Enduring and taking accountability when nobody else right. wants to endure and take accountability. That's it. Mm -hmm. When the doorbell rings at 3 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. the woman can handle, I'm sure you're pretty sure the women went to the gun range. I've seen their photos. I know they like shooting. <laughs> I know they can handle themselves. I'm not saying they can't. They can defend themselves just as well. Some of them defend it. But just out of sheer responsibility, the man should be the one to say, anybody trying to get up in here, try to get me and my family got to first get through me. That's right. That's right. That's just the sheer understanding of your responsibility. We have to teach our young men the purpose of a man, That's the right. purpose of a father, so that they can know. That's right. When the tire breaks down and you're in the flat and you got a boy and a girl in the car, one of them jokers need to be able to know how to change the flat. They're just simple things that you're going to encounter as you're growing up that our young men need to know. If a man and a girl are out, a man and a woman, I'm sorry, are out, it ain't the, the woman's job to get out there and pump the gas. Come on, y'all. Like, this is, this is just, these are things I actually see. Like, I've been walking to the car and I see a, a a man is sitting in the car while a woman pumping gas. I'm like, that blows my mind. Amen. Amen. If we let little things go, this is how we get these big problems. That's right. Nobody wants to be accountable. Nobody wants to take responsibility. That's what God put us here first for, right? It was the man that was born first to encounter these things, and then his help me. So we have to take accountability. And three things I want to talk about is being accountable and taking responsibility. Knowing how to endure, and finally submitting to God and trusting his provision. Amen? Amen. And the, the basis of what I'll come from all this, the context of all this, is Genesis 22. So let's go there. Back the bad bull. 
right back to back Boulevard. Repeat the test. That's why it's so important when God gives us instruction on something, when God gives us the wisdom to do something, that we just go forward with it, right? We don't have to sit back and question it and start wondering, well, should I do this? Do God really want me to do it like this? No, I, I got to get out there and do what God said do. If nobody else is doing it, I got to do what God said do. Accountability. So God tested Abraham, tempted him in his way. This is what he told him. Abraham, and Abraham said what? Behold, mm -hmm. here I am, being readily available, hearing the voice of God, being willing again to submit to God and trust his provision. And he said, take now thy son, mm -hmm. your only son, Isaac, whom, guess what? Mm -hmm. I know you love him. Yes. The key thing to remember here, guys, is... Mm -hmm. Listen to what the Lord says. He says in verse 2, take your son, mm -hmm. your only son. That's right. Was that his only son? Yes. Yeah. No. Oh, no. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's the, that's the only one that said no, sir. I heard them, yeah, them, yeah, echo throughout the whole. Throughout. <laughs> you can correct me now, that's fine. I can, I, but I'm just saying, Pastor, yeah, now, no, sir. I heard an echo of yes in there. That wasn't his only son. He had Ishmael. But the promise was made to Isaac and for us. That's what God That's what God is with. God not even thinking about And again, God blessed Ishmael, so I don't mean it in a negative way. But what I mean is what God was intending to do in the earth was going to be done through Isaac's lineage. So that's what God was looking at. Ishmael didn't even exist in his mind in terms of what he was going to do. And he needed Abraham to focus on that. So that's why when it was time, Abraham loved Ishmael. He hated to have to put him out. But Ishmael had to go with his mother, Hagar, and they had to have their own life. But Abraham's life was going to be focused on Sarah and Isaac. Because that's to whom the promises was made. That's right. Hagar and Ishmael represented doing everything our own way. See, uh, the man has to recognize when he's doing things his way and when it's time to do things God's way. The ego can't allow me to cripple myself by just thinking, oh, I'm the man, I'm going to do it my way. Can't nobody tell me what to do. That's right. Ego, that's ego, bravado, pride that leads to destruction. That's right. That's right. How many men have ended up in the grave, mm -hmm. in the prison? In uncompromised, in compromised situations, right. because we refuse to just allow that ego to be right. dead right. and submit to God His way. That's right. That's good. We have this culture that that again elevates men with this bravado, yeah. Yeah. like we're somebody. We ain't nothing. That's right. Unless we trust in God. That's unless we belong to God. That's right. Otherwise, you ain't nothing. You just dust. Here right. today and gone tomorrow. The world won't even remember you. But when you represent the Lord, yeah. you got a legacy that's yeah. going to speak forever. Yeah. But it takes courage to follow the Lord. Yes, it does. It takes courage to be the one person that wants to lead and do right when everybody else is saying, well, do it that way. Mm -hmm. That's why we have to lead by example. That's right. Not just do as I say, but do as I do. Watch me. Follow me as I follow Christ. That's it. And if nobody else wants to take the responsibility, we got to be the ones accountable. Yeah. So take your son to test him, even your only son, Isaac, whom you love us, and get thee into the land of Moriah. Okay, God, that's cool. Me and Isaac going on a little trip? Cool. I ain't got no problem with that. God says, and offer him there for a burnt offering yeah. upon one of the mountains, which I would tell, okay, now stop everything. Yeah. God, you took it too far. Now I was with you. Now think about we gotta think about this, everything that Abraham has went through. Yeah. Right? It was a time he was just Abram. That's right. In Ur of the Chaldees. God promises him all these things. We all then then made these visions. We got these visions and dreams of what we want yeah. God to do for us, yeah. right? right? If you don't have it, you need to start brainstorming and writing it down. That's start right. writing down the vision of what you want God to do for you. That's right. That's super important. You can't just be walking out here blind in the world, thinking something's gonna fall out of the sky. That's you gotta have a vision and a plan and ask God to give it to you. But Abram had received all of these wonderful blessings from God. Culminating with this man who was old and his wife who was barren having this healthy baby boy. 
Now God has done all that for him, only to now tell him, take your son whom you love, whom I promised to you, and offer him as a burnt sacrifice, a.k.a. kill him on one of the mountains I'm going to show you. Everybody can do the job when it's easy. But when, again, you got to be the man where nobody else is going to do it. When everybody else is going the wrong thing, and you know if you step up and say, do this, everybody going to shun you and not talk you. Can you still do it, right? When you know you're going to lose everything that you kind of love, can you still do what God said? When nobody's watching, and you may lose out on a little bit of money, you may lose out on friendships, but can you still endure as a servant of God? Can you still be obedient and not try to take a shortcut? Yeah. Will you do it God's way or will you do it your way? Wow. See, the blessing is in enduring, yeah. patient endurance. The blessing yeah. is in overcoming. To him who overcomes yeah. will I allow to eat from yeah. the tree of life. Yeah. Endure. Anybody can do it when it's when it's good outcome expected, when it's all happy, yeah. happy go lucky. Yeah, yeah. That's why. But when the 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 when the what's the word? The I can't think of the word, so I'll just tell you what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. When the outcome is uncertain, mm -hmm. and you may lose everything That's right. that you really love, that you're attached to, mm -hmm. because God said, this is the boat Abraham was in. That's right. This is his only begotten son whom he loves. That's right. That his wife, Sarah, in her old age, bear to him. That's right. See, a lot of times we have things that we, close, we hold close to our heart, closer than even God. Uh -huh. And sometimes when we make something like that an idol, mm. yeah. God will just have to weigh the balance a little bit. Right. Yeah. He'll have to check the scales and yeah. see, hmm, mm. you, know, you say you love me, but let me, let me put this in the balance and see mm. which one, because it seems like this other thing has your heart. Yeah. This is the kicker. If there's anything that has our heart more than God, that's our God. That's why Jesus said you can't serve two masters. Right. So when we talk about being priest of our home and leading by example, we're showing our relationship with God through the good times, mm -hmm. through the bad times. Yes. We need to be praying when nobody else is praying. That's right. When everybody told Job, his wife told him to curse God and die, yeah. he had to be the one to endure yes. and say, no, yes. the Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. I'm going to serve him. That's Blessed right. be the name of the Lord. We got to be the standard and the example when the whole world is watching. Right. And nobody else is doing it. We got to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Argue for what? I know this is a side note. I'm sorry. But argue for what? What's for what? Mm -hmm. I represent God. That's right. Even key. That's all I say. Never too high, never too low. Mm -hmm. You want to have a conversation? We can have a good conversation. I'm not going to yell and speak. I represent God. That's right. And I don't abuse my authority or power. Right. I treat you with grace in the same way God treats me with grace. That's right. yeah. You being the weaker vessel. Yeah. I'm not usurping my authority over you as a man. I'm treating you and in, 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 uh, sacrificing for you in a way that shows you that I love you. Right. Yeah. That's, That's right. Good. That's good. That's the beauty of it. Paul says I could exercise certain authority in yeah. as an apostle. That's right. I don't do it. Because I'm trying to prove a point and show yeah. you something. Yeah. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him. Isaac, his son, got the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went to the place which God had told him. And on the third day, hallelujah, the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes. He saw the place afar off. It's time now. Endure, right? Got to know how to endure. It's not going to always be easy. Abraham sees the place afar off, so you can imagine what's running through his mind. So Abraham said to his young men, Abide ye here with the animal, and I and the lad will go up yonder and do what? Worship. Worship. And come again to you. See, in that time, they looked at worship as something that had to die and be sacrificed That's at the right. altar. That's right. That's right. right? That's right. It represented communion with the Lord. That's right. Well, that's another sermon for another day. We don't have time for that, okay? But he, <laughs> they're going up there to worship. But guess what he says? We're going to come again yeah. to yeah. you. Yeah. Now, the Lord had said, yeah. get thee up in the mountain, I'll show you, and kill your son, even your only begotten son. But 
Abraham, who was not weak in faith. But such and such and such, put your name there, who was not weak in Like, accountability. That's it. Faith. Abraham didn't get out, and then when God told him this, he didn't go call Sarah like, baby, I don't know what I'm going to do. God want me to kill Isaac. What we going to do? This is our only son. But he ain't do none of that. He got up with Isaac, got the young men, and they went to the place God showed him. Leadership. Accountability. Planning. Vision. Could you imagine? If Abraham went in there crying to Sarah, baby, I don't know what we're going to Man, you Abraham, Sarah would have looked at him like, you Abraham, you know what to do. You got faith. That's you know right. what God told you. Whatever he said, do it. Yeah. That's right. That's the kind of mentality we have to have. But that requires a faith level that's consistently consistent, not wavering and being tossed to and fro right. like the waves in the that's ocean. Right. That's right. Faith is consistency. Uh -huh. The same every day, every day, walking with God every day. Not hot and cold, not reading the Bible every now and then. Mm -hmm. Not obeying the commandments every now and then. It's consistently. Mm -hmm. Leadership. Accountability. Mm -hmm. Knowing that it's going to work out. And if it don't, put all the blame on my shoulders. If something go wrong, Abraham said, I'll take it off. This ain't my wife's fault. This ain't my son. I'll take it off. Mm -hmm. Verse 6. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father, and said, My father. He said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold. Now listen to this from Isaac. Behold, the fire and the wood. Because Isaac knew what a burnt offering meant. We just read how the Lord knew Abraham instructed his kids on how to obey the Lord. So Isaac was familiar with this, with what we were supposed to be doing here. So he says, behold, the fire, the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham, verse, uh, the point three says, submit to God, trust his provision. Trust his provision, right? Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself. Yes. See, walking with the Lord is understanding I don't have nothing to do with this. That's right. I'm trusting in the one that made me. So if he doesn't provide, I don't have anything. If he doesn't make provision, I'm not going to prosper. I'm not going out here on my own thinking this is all on me. Like, if oh, I got to make this happen. I'm trusting in the Lord. And because I'm trusting in him, the reflection is it's going to all work out. That's right. To my good and to his glory. Uh -huh. Even when it don't look like it. Even when it feels bad. Right. Endure. Keep yeah. going. Take it by the horns. <laughs> That's right. You know? He says God's going to provide himself a lamb. He don't need no help. He's God alone for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together and they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. And guess what he did? He bound Isaac, his son. He laid him on the altar upon the wood. Now can you imagine Abraham who loves his son now placing him on this wood bound with ropes. Right? Like he's an animal. Going somewhere, y'all. I'm almost done. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to do it. Endure. Even in the hard times. Be obedient. Even when it doesn't seem like it's going to be a positive outcome. Even though when you seem like you're not going to get nothing out of being good. Right. Still doing the right thing. It's called integrity. That's right. Now, Abraham, this is why God was testing Abraham. Because the scripture says that he was giving him insight mm -hmm. on what was to come yeah. in the future yeah. or a prophecy. Yeah. Yeah. Meaning Abraham was a type and shadow yeah. of what was to come. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give this quick testimony. I told you I've been doing music and I got another album coming out. Seemingly the next coming days. I was talking to my friend Jabri. And we were just writing a song. Apart from each other. All three, three different people on the song. All three of us were writing in different ways. 
And he called me one day. He said, Jamal, man, this is crazy. I was reading our verses, and it's like your verse seems like God is just talking to man. And I said, dang, I didn't think about it like that. But now that you say that, I can see that. And, and my verse seemed like it's, it's man responding to God. And he just started walking through this, and I started looking at the lyrics. I was like, boy, you, you might be on to something. <laughs> but it was happening like that naturally. I didn't realize it. In the scripture, these people are just living their lives. Right. They don't know that they're prophesying for something to happen a thousand right. years That's later. Right. They're just living their life. That's but God is using them in an intentional way to show us an outcome. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It's written for our learning. That's right. That's right. So Abraham was a type and shadow of the father and the son. Yeah. Abraham and Isaac. Yeah. Who do you have? You have the father, Abraham. Uh -huh. Father of many nations. Nobody like him. You have Isaac, the son of promise, his only begotten son. Yeah. What do we have? We have God the Father, yeah. his only begotten son, Jesus. Yeah. The That's scripture why. tells you, yeah. listen to this, the scripture tells you that it was not a man that struck the death blow to Jesus Christ. That's the why. scripture says he was smitten That's of why. God. Yeah. And afflicted. For God so loved the world that he gave his yeah. only begotten son. Yeah. And so God is showing Abraham, he's showing all of us now, how he would willfully give his son Jesus That's to right. be killed by him right. so that we could now have one. Yeah. Yeah. He tells Abraham, let me show you this in verse 11. As Abraham takes the knife to slay Isaac. The angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. He said, here am I. The angel tells him in verse 12, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing that you have not withheld your son, even your only son, from me. So Abraham, I'm showing you. I respect your faith. Yeah. And I'll give you everything that you want because even in this, you obeyed me. Right. And what I really want you to see is I need you to take up your son, Isaac, Amen. because I'm going to put my son, Jesus, in that same place. Yeah. Yes. Wow. The Lord shall provide himself yes. a lamb. Yeah. Not just any yeah. animal, yeah. a lamb. That's right. And so when John the Baptist is baptized in Jordan, he sees Jesus approaching him and he says, Behold the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. So again, all of these scriptures are written not just to be in the Bible. They're written for our learning. God is giving us a little peek to show us that no matter what you thought, no matter how bad it gets, I always had a plan for you. This thing just started when you showed up, when you was born. This happened thousands of years ago. I was prophesying over your life. I was speaking words of deliverance and encouragement over you so that you would know that you're going to have a good success. That's why it's so important for us to put the word of God over our home. That's right. It's going to be a lot of calamity in these homes sometimes, right? That's right. Yeah. And I'm speaking from somebody who I'm not currently married, but I have been in that position. Okay. And I know it's not easy. That's right. But as the man, I made many mistakes. Things that I know now, I, I just, I, I'm the one that messed up because I was not doing what I was supposed to do. And that's why I oftentimes tell us in certain things and very vulnerable experience to get us to know you don't have to repeat the same mistakes. Right. Do it now while you have an opportunity. That's right. When confusion is going on in your house, if the kids acting up, the relationship is strained, whatever is going on, you have to be the one that keeps a calmness over the house. Mm -hmm. You, if nobody else, if everybody's acting crazy, somebody got to be the same one that represents that's right. God and says. That's right. This is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to get out of this. This is the direction we're going to go. Right. Mm -hmm. That's how you're going to respect. That's right. Because you've got to stand on that. Right. Mm -hmm. But again, you have to be consistent in that. Not hot one day, not cold the next. Yeah, that's right. Abraham was consistently consistent what? to a point where it's scared. Like, man, how did Abraham have this kind of faith? Yeah. How did he just do this all the time? I'm pretty sure it was times where he was like, well, Lord, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. But, but for the most part, he was consistently consistent. And anybody that's unstable as water cannot leave. Right. That's right. Amen. People will never respect you. That's right. Amen. Amen. Everywhere you go, your reputation should be the same. That's right. 
Everywhere you go. As a man, your reputation, your reputation should be the same no matter where you go. Because you represent God. That's right. You represent God. And we know the characteristics of the Lord. Mm -hmm. If we represent God, we got to be like him. Mm -hmm. It would be a shame if y'all bring me my boss from Texas, mm -hmm. bring my coworkers in here and start interviewing them. Right. And you start asking questions about when they say Jamal. Can you go to church? Me, a pastor? <laughs> what, him? Yeah. That's right. Our reputation has to precede. Right. We, got, we got to be the same to all men. Know how to treat mm -hmm. people That's right. in a way that glorifies God. That's right. Know how to give, not expecting yeah. anything That's back. Right. That's right. Know how to be of help. That's right. To speak a word in season when people need it. Yeah. To discipline when it's time to bring right. down the heavy hand. Yeah. To not be swayed because of emotions and what people are doing. That's right. Trusting in the word of God. Mm -hmm. That should be our goal. I'm out of time, y'all. I said I was going to quit. And I, 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 I will pick it up maybe some other time. But I'm done, y'all. Back in the